joined by Dr. Judy Josser in Phoenix. He is the founder and president at the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. We're also joined by Middle East Forum fellow Rahim Kassam from Washington. Uh, Dr. Josser, let's start with you. The administration's uh, counterterrorism strategy really emphasizing combating radical Islamic terrorist groups and Islamic ideology. Now, this is a significant departure from the Obama administration, which aimed to de-emphasize the threat of Islamic terror. What do you think of the strategy? Well, I think it's refreshing. It's it's really the story that unfortunately got buried by the Supreme Court issue this week. But at the end of the day, this is a huge shift from the 2011 Obama strategy that our entire Muslim reform movement criticized in, in a major paper that we released right after their strategy in July 2011, in which we said they, they used the word ideology but never mentioned Islamism, never mentioned jihad, never mentioned the common thread. This counterterrorism strategy is refreshingly honest. It talks about the common thread talks about the fact that even though ISIS is on the verge of being decimated, the ideology will keep coming back as a whack-a-mole to Al-Qaeda, to Palestinian Jihad, to Hamas, etc. So basically, this is an honest strategy given to the American people as a roadmap of what the Trump administration is planning to do. We saw the absence of the term CVE. Thank God, countering violent extremism, which meant nothing. Now they talk about terrorism prevention, and they're talking about Islamism and the threat of ideology, and hopefully now the next step, this is a healthy start, the next step will be engaging Muslim reformers who can help in an offense rather than simply defense. Rahim, uh, would you agree that it's essential to highlight the Islamic jihadist ide ideology behind terrorism? Because unless you can acknowledge what the threat is and what the source of the threat is, you, you can't really fight it. Yeah, I think Dr. Jass is exactly um, correct in what he says about playing whack-a-mole. You know, these groups don't just uh, disappear, they, they transfigure, they change their names, they may change their tactics, but the underlying threat remains the same. Uh, these are uh, radical Islamist supremacist movements that we're dealing with here. And, and what I particularly enjoyed seeing in this new counterterrorism strategy um, was a broadening, uh, not just focusing on the sort of traditional Islamic terrorist groups as, we, as we've known them across the world, but actually broadening that. They've included new groups uh, in Pakistan, for example. Uh, and also, as you mentioned in your package, um, the, the, the stress on Iran here. Here, which John Bolton called the uh, the central banker uh, of global terror mm -hmm. uh, terrorism and terror finance, I believe, and that's an incredibly important thing. You know, this is President Trump and his administration once again delivering on on a major campaign promise. ISIS was 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 sort of steadily defeated over the course of last year, uh, and now that allows the U.S. and its allies around the world to shift their focus uh, onto where other threats may lie. So this is, I think, a very uh, interesting development, a very uh, positive development. But uh, it's a shame, as Dr. Jasser said, that it's been overshadowed by Democrats on Capitol Hill leaping and screaming about uh, 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 Justice Kavanaugh. Well, Do Dr. Jasser, are you worried at all that stressing the role of uh, jihadism and Islam could create anti-Muslim sentiment or fuel Islamophobia? Absolutely not. I mean, actually, the establishment over at the Atlantic responded and said this is actually a minimal change. They tried to say that it was hardly any movement uh, at the needle and that uh, they really continued the same policy. I think that tells you that when you're honest about jihadism and Islamism, the folks who are experts in this realize there's not much to say other than to deal with the truth. And I think there's nothing more anti-Islamic or anti-Muslim than lying to America and treating Muslims as children rather than as adults and actually then generalizing that we're all either peaceful or we're all either radical. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. And when you deal with it as truthful and as adults, actually it becomes much more honest and you engage Muslims as a solution rather than simply ignoring them because you're worried about political correctness and the grievance groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations and other Islamists that are now surely going to read this and, and, and uh, wither away. Uh, Dr. Judy Josser, thank you so much. Brilliant analysis. Uh, as always, uh, Rahim, we'll give you the last word here. You've got about 30 seconds. 
Yeah, look, I want to stress that while the Obama administration thought that climate change was the main driver or one of the main drivers uh, of global uh, Islamic terrorism, this administration is actually taking it seriously uh, and it bodes very well for fighting off not just uh, the ideology but also fighting back against these nonsense Islamophobia claims. The real Islamophobes, as Dr. Jassa said, are the ones who, who, who protect radical Islamic terrorists within Muslim communities and I think this, this strategy changes that. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Rahim Qasim and Dr. Judy Jasser. Appreciate it.